Hi, and welcome to this introductory video to photography. I'm John Roszkowski. I'm the teacher for photography here at UNC. Um, today we're just going to be discussing some basics as far as the camera you'll be using and some of the um, settings that are on that camera. Um, we'll get started right away. So for the participants of the photography program, you'll be using a Canon Rebel um, camera. And there's uh, two different versions of this that we have. Um, very similar though in functionality. Uh, so I'm only gonna use uh, the T6 as the example for this one here. One of the first things you'll need to know about this is how to get to the battery and to the uh, SD card reader in here. And that is right on the bottom of the camera. Um, all you have to do is there's a, a little latch there. You're gonna push that down and then lift up on the door. That'll swing it open. Um, if the battery is not already in it, it should be supplied in the uh, bags that we have with the cameras. Um, you'll just take the battery, insert it right there. Um, there's a little gray switch here that'll kind of lock it down. If you pull this back, it'll actually pop the battery back out if you need to take it out to get it charged or whatever. Um, next thing, you'll need an SD card. And right above the battery, you'll see there's a little slot there. Um, you can take your SD card and all you have to do is just push it right in. You'll hear it click into place and it'll be set there. It'll be ready to go. Um, if you do push on that again, it will pop back out um, in case you need to take it out to get some of your photos off of that. So I'm going to push it back in um, and we should be all set to go as far as taking photos. A um, couple basics as far as utilizing and holding the camera. Um, all the cameras do have a strap on them. Um, when you're taking photos, it is important to keep the strap around your neck. That way, if you accidentally let go or drop it, um, it's a little more protected because um, we do want to make sure that we're taking care of these when we use them. Um, the other thing to think about is that when you're holding it, um, it's kind of intuitive. There's a little grip here on the one side. You're going to use uh, the bottom three fingers of your hand to kind of hold on to it, pushing it against like the meat of your palm, and that'll hold it into place. And that way this finger is free to um, hit the trigger button, take photos, or even to make uh, adjustments that you might have with this little wheel here. And I'll go over more about the functionality of that in a second. Your other hand, um, you can use as a support to kind of steady your camera when you're taking shots. Um, you can also use it, you have uh, your pointer and your thumb free to use the big wheel to zoom in and out when you're taking photos. Um, and you'll have the small wheel to kind of focus uh, when you're taking your photos. It's important every time you take photo that you want to make sure that you're focusing your shot before you take it. All right. So that's just a couple of the basics as far as holding the camera and getting ready to take a picture. Um, now we'll go into this section right here around the dial. First thing you will notice is that there is a little switch on the side of it for on and off. Turn your camera on, just switch it. You'll get uh, some feedback on the display screen back here uh, letting you know it's on. Um, I'm gonna start with some of the basic um, little symbols here on the dial. Uh, the first one is the one that we primarily use is AV, which is Aperture Priority. Um, what that means is that you want to think of the aperture of the camera as that the hole where the, where the light and the image is coming through. Um, think about that as your eye or the, the iris of your eye. Um, when it's wide open, you're letting more light in. When it's smaller, you're letting less light in. Um, so that is one of the functionalities of the aperture. The other thing to know is that you can adjust your aperture. Um, it's called an f-stop or an f-number. Um, and you can do that using the dial that I had mentioned before. So at this rate, uh, where it's zoomed in now, it can only go down as low as five. But if I turn that wheel, it can go higher. Now, the one thing about f-stop numbers is they're a little bit counterintuitive. The smaller the number, the wider the aperture is open. Whereas the larger the number, the smaller the aperture is. Uh, and this does a couple different things. With the smaller number, you're going to only be able to focus on whatever your subject matter is. Everything else should be blurry um, around the subject matter if it's a small aperture. It also means that the aperture is wide open. Um, when you raise that number to something as high as like maybe 32, you have a smaller aperture, but everything will be as clear when you focus. Um, so th this is, it's great when you want to use a lower number for a single subject matter where you're just taking a picture of a person and you want them to outshine their background. Um, the higher number is great when you want to do um, landscape shots of your surroundings. 
Um, so just some important things to know about Aperture. The other great thing, um, while in Aperture mode, you really don't have to worry about setting anything else. Um, as soon as you set the Aperture for what you need, the camera will intuitively set everything else as far as uh, shutter speed. Um, and there is even something uh, called ISO, which I'll go over a little bit later. ISO, you could set to automatic so that it automatically changes that for you as well, depending on what you're taking your picture of. All right. The next thing I want to talk about is um, TV is the next setting, which is on here. And that's actually shutter priority. So where aperture priority, you're focusing on how big or small the aperture is to let in light. Shutter speed priority, you're changing the shutter speed itself. So think of that if you're relating it to your eyeball as blinking. So if you have one one thousandth of a shutter speed, it's going to be a really fast blink. When you start going into seconds, like one second or two seconds, it's going to blink slower. And what that's doing is the faster that the shutter speed happens, um, it'll open up quicker, which means less light is getting in that way. Um, but you'll also be able to get um, shots of things that are moving fast and they'll seem still. Whereas if you leave the shutter open for a long period of line, long period of time, like let's say in like five or ten seconds, it's going to be open longer, which means you're letting more light in. But in the same respect, if it's not perfectly still, your images may come out blurry. But this is also good, especially if you have a tripod um, to use uh, the shutter speed, because if you have it open and maybe you're taking a picture of a waterfall, you'll get more movement in that waterfall. The water will kind of blend, but everything else will kind of stay clear. So you kind of get a sense of motion with it. Um, and again, um, the camera will figure out everything else. So it'll change the aperture priority for you while you're in shutter speed. Um, and again, if you have the ISO set to auto, um, it'll change that for you as well. Um, now I've said ISO a couple times now. So what is ISO? ISO relates to the sensor that's on your camera. Now, I don't know if you can see it there, but that little kind of clear window with that little white dot there, that is a light sensor. So when you have it on auto for the, the ISO, it's telling the camera to kind of judge the lighting that is around you to figure out whether it needs to be darker or lighter or change its own settings for that. You can manually change this. If you look on the back of the camera, there is an ISO button. And when I press that, you'll get numbers like 100, 200, 6,400. Um, just briefly going over that, if I had this set to 100, I'm telling that sensor and the camera that I'm in a very well-lit room or I'm outside and it's a bright sunny day. Um, so you'll get better shots that way. Um, conversely, if I set it all the way to 6,400, I'm telling the camera that it's almost pitch black in the room or maybe it's nighttime or there's um, way less light uh, available for the sensor to pick up. So it's gonna increase the intensity of light that the sensor picks up to make and balance out the picture. Um, and then, like I said, any of these numbers in between, like 800 might be like a medium lit room or it might be like an overcast day. And you can kind of experiment that if you want to. Again, for beginners, you can just set it to auto and you should be good. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about is manual, which is the M on there. Uh, what manual does is you have control over shutter speed, you have control over the aperture. So you get to decide how fast the lens is opening, how wide the aperture is open. And this can be used in a lot of creative ways. Um, it's also a little more tedious, but it'll give you more control over the pictures you're taking. Um, again, starting out, you're probably gonna be using aperture priority because it helps you out the best and you'll get some very quick results with that. So aperture priority with ISO set to auto, um, you'll be able to start taking some photos and getting some really good results just with that. Later on, we'll discuss uh, manual and maybe even using shutter speed um, to get some different stuff. Um, one last thing, um, there are a whole bunch of other settings on there. We do have auto, which is the A plus thing right there. Um, and that, essentially will do everything for you. Um, maybe for a couple beginning classes, we might use that uh, just to get your hands dirty a little bit with taking some photos. Um, but as far as getting good quality photos, I wouldn't rely on it. I would 
definitely switch to aperture priority as soon as possible. Uh, a couple other things. There are some switches on the side of the, the lens here. One says stabilizer. Um, that should always be kept on. That just kind of reduces how much blur you get from movement. And the more you move when you're taking your photos, you will get some blur as far as that. So you might want to practice holding the camera steady. And I'll go over a couple of things in a second with that. The other thing is AF and MF. Um, now AF, we'll set it to autofocus, where if I just push this button down, where I'm just slightly like I'm taking a picture, but not all the way, you'll hear and see the lens kind of moving to adjust where it's taking the picture of or where you're pointing it. It sometimes might also engage the flash, which I would not recommend. Uh, flash kind of makes everything kind of look like flat cardboard um, when it's lit. Um, if you feel more confident, setting it to MF, which is manual focus, gives you control over the zoom, gives you control over focusing it yourself, um, gives you some better quality. Now, as for holding the camera, um, we went over, like I said, holding in this hand by the grip, you have more control here, you have more control here. Um, some ways to get steadier shots would be to kind of prop your elbows into your chest as you're doing it and then aim that way. Um, another thing would be to kind of kneel and use your elbow and make your own little tripod there. Maybe brace yourself up against a wall um, to kind of get steadier shots. Uh, another trick that a lot of photographers use is to breathe in deeply and hold that breath right before they take the shot. Um, and that'll relieve you breathing in and out and the up and down motion that sometimes happens when you're trying to take a shot and you're breathing. So holding your breath for that split second before you take the shot will give you steadier shots. Another little cheat, um, this thing does have a viewfinder, um, which is great to use for taking photos. And a lot of photographers would rather use the viewfinder. However, if you look on the back, so I just said to AV mode again, there's a little camera button up here. And when you press that, you'll get a, a live view on your screen of uh, what you're aiming at. Uh, so this might help you too. Um, when you do all your focusing and zooming, it'll also show up on the screen as well. Um, a lot of first timers or a lot of beginning photographers will use that too, uh, because at least you'll see what the image is gonna look like prior to taking it. Um, and this also includes when you switch over ISO, when you switch over the aperture, when you switch over the shutter speed, you'll be able to get a sense of how dark or how too light the photo is going to be because uh, the screen will already kind of figure that out for you, uh, which is good. Another thing to notice is that on any of these screens, whether you're using the, the live feed screen or whether you're on the, the screen where you can change settings, sometimes the camera will shut everything down and the screen will go black. You didn't do anything wrong. Um, all this is, is it's the camera kind of conserving on the battery life. So it'll kind of shut down if it senses you haven't been using it in a little bit. And all you simply have to do is hit the display button and everything will come back up. Um, but again, it's just a way that the, the camera kind of conserves on battery. So that's the basics you need to know about using a Canon Rebel. As we go through the class, you'll learn some different techniques. You'll learn how to use those settings uh, more properly, and hopefully you'll become more comfortable in taking photos. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, again, it will be easier once you have the cameras in hand to kind of experiment with them yourselves. Um, until then, like I said, I hope you review this just to get a little bit of information before using the camera, and I look forward to seeing you in class. Uh, until then, take care.